Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you for uh, giving me the time and being down here with me today. I, I hate that you can't see my charts uh, uh, today. They're not uh, particularly uh, uh, colorful or exciting, but they are important in that they are going to tell the story of something that we've gotten done together. Now, I don't want... Uh, I don't want you to think I'm just making something up down here on the floor of the House, Mr. Speaker. I know you're probably thinking about the 326 bills that we've passed here in the House that are still sitting over there in the Senate gathering dust, having received no action whatsoever. You, you might be thinking about the work going on in the Rules Committee where we're uh, suing the President for failure to, uh, to implement the law as, uh, as he crafted it, uh, drafted it, and, and signed it. Uh, you might be thinking about uh, the uh, border crisis that's happening right now that's been marked by so much inaction. I don't mean to say uh, that there are not lots of things that need to be worked on in this body. Uh, there are. Uh, but I wanted to take just a few minutes uh, out this afternoon, Mr. Speaker, to talk about one of the rare successes that we have had. And it's a success that's a, a long time coming. I represent uh, Metro Atlanta, Mr. Speaker, kind of the northeastern suburbs there in Metro Atlanta. Uh, and uh, right down uh, I-75 uh, and then out I-16, you get to the, the great and historic city of Savannah, and folks think about Savannah for all sorts of different things, uh, uh, whether it's uh, uh, Oglethorpe and his arrival, whether it's uh, dyeing the river green on St. Patrick's Day, uh, whether it's the birth of the Girl Scouts uh, in, uh, uh, in Savannah. Lots of things to, to uh, bring it to mind, but folks don't often think about the economic driver that the port of Savannah is for the entire southeastern United States. So often we talk about constituent interests on the floor, Mr. Speaker. What's good for, for this one district in Alabama or this one district in, in New York? What I want to talk about is the impact of the port of Savannah on the economy of the entire southeastern United States. You might not know, Mr. Speaker, from your part of the world, it's the fourth largest container terminal in the nation. Single largest, uh, or the largest single terminal operation uh, in all of, of North America. The, the single terminal, one, one long uh, dock there in, uh, in Savannah. It handles three million uh, container equivalents uh, absolutely uh, uh, every, uh, uh, every cycle. Volume's up 7% uh, this year alone. When we talk about the number of folks it impacts, Mr. Speaker, we're talking about 21,000 companies from across the United States of America bring their commerce in and out of the port of Savannah. And, and here's what's so important about our ports, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if, if everyone uh, in, internalizes is their, their value. Savannah's a great example. 48% of the t container traffic in that port are imports coming into America goods and services that, that uh, American consumers want to buy. But 52% of the traffic coming in and out of that port are exports. 48% are things that we're buying from, from folks overseas, but 52% are goods that were manufactured with American hands, putting paychecks into Americans' pockets, shipping those goods right back out uh, overseas. 48% imports, 52% exports. Now, why am I talking about that? We've got, a, we've got an exciting opportunity going on uh, in this hemisphere, Mr. Speaker. You may have heard the term Panamax, uh, Panamax ships. The, the new Panama Canal, and, and you won't be able to see these numbers, Mr. Speaker, so I'll just go through them uh, 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 briefly. The new Panama Canal is going to accommodate ships that carry not twice the number of containers that ships carry today, not uh, three times the containers, but almost three and a half times more containers than ships carry today. Now, what does that mean? That means if you're the fourth largest container port in the country, as Savannah is, if you're the fastest growing container port in the country, as Savannah is, you better get to work making sure that your equipment your port, your docks, your channel can accommodate the newer, larger ships. Today, the draft on uh, ships coming through the Panama Canal, uh, Mr. Speaker, are just uh, under 40 feet. The new drafts of these Panamax ships are going to be 50 feet, 10 feet more, 25 percent more. It requires major changes and renovations in our ports, and guess what? When the state of Georgia recognizes that we have a critical economic uh, engine driving our economy, a critical economic engine for the entire southeastern United States, 
We can't just get together as the state of Georgia and decide we're going to do some dredging and make sure that our port is ready for these newer, modern, larger ships. We're not allowed to. Why? Well, it has a lot to do with, well, this building and the one down at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and a couple over in southwest D.C. at the EPA and our friends over at the Corps of Engineers. There is federal law after federal law after federal law that says to the state of Georgia, no, you cannot expand your port without our permission. Now, that would be a source of great uh, difference of agreement uh, in this body about whether we ought to have the kind of federal regulatory burden that we do in order to make those decisions, but in fact that is the law of the land today, and so we must deal with it. We're talking about deeper channels, we're talking about wider docking uh, berths, we're talking about trying to move, again, not twice as many, not three times as many, but three and a half times as many uh, containers tomorrow as we were moving yesterday, and we have been battling as Georgians, as folks from the southeastern United States, as people trying to grow the economy, we have been battling the federal red tape machine, not for a week, not for a month, not for a year, but almost a decade. I say almost a decade. It's really been more than a decade, Mr. Speaker, but it's been going on for a decade in earnest, and we have finally gotten to the finish line. We've finally gotten to a place where the paperwork has been signed, the, the checks are being written, where we're going to be able to do the kind of dredging and modernization that's necessary to continue the economic engine here in the country. What we're going to do is deepen our uh, port from 42 feet to 47. Now, I mentioned to you that the, the draft of these new ships is 50 feet. We couldn't get permission to dredge deep enough to actually uh, handle the 50 foot uh, 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 depth there. What we're going to we can't handle that draft. Uh, they include some of their cargo either in Charleston, down in uh, Jacksonville. They're going to have to come into, into Savannah Light. Couldn't make it happen that we could organize our, our port to actually handle uh, the, the, uh, the fully loaded ships in the new Panamax uh, model. But we're going to deepen to 47 at a cost of about $700 million. Now that's real money. It's real money, and it's real money that's coming in a cost-share uh, agreement. The state of Georgia is picking up more than $200 million of that. The federal government's also picking up a, a share, recognizing the importance of economic development across the, across the region. Cost shares are important, Mr. Speaker. I, I, I've been talking to some of our colleagues. You may have had the same conversation. Uh, there is really no limit to the number of folks who are willing to take free money. Uh, if you offer free money, if there's a grant proposal that's just going to give you something, folks are willing to raise their hand and say, yes, give it to me. Uh, you ask people to put some skin in the game, it creates a completely different dynamic for who's on board and who's thinking they want to, uh, want to opt out this time around. Georgia is on board to the tune of $200 million because it's important. And when things are important, we ought to be able to come together and get those things done. Again, this Port of Savannah uh, this uh, Corps of Engineers uh, project, uh, this bit of the, the WERDA bill, authorized in the, in the, in the WERDA bill, uh, the Water Resources Development uh, Act, a rare episode of folks coming together and getting things done. When we talk about uh, what this means, Mr. Speaker, we're talking about 11,000 jobs nationwide. 11,000 jobs nationwide. I say nationwide, Mr. Speaker, only about 2,400 of those jobs are going to be local jobs there around the port, but we can't get wrapped up in what's good for, for me, what's good for my community to the exclusion of what's good for us. We're all in this together. Is, is Savannah going to have a disproportionate benefit uh, for the investment in this port? Of course it is. They're also going to be disproportionately burdened. Their streets are going to be uh, more crowded. Their housing prices are going to be affected. Everything is, is affected. But this is not a local concern. This is a national concern. Mr. Speaker, the world is changing. The world is, is a dynamic place. Again, it doesn't take much to, to see that that uh, what, was, what was the amazing engineering marvel that was the Panama Canal has been set aside now as being too old, too antiquated, too small to handle modern needs. We're now talking about this, this Panamax uh, Canal that is going to, to, to bring 
ships the size of which you and I have never seen, Mr. Speaker, uh, to American ports in record time, saving fuel, making a difference to the energy uh, economy, making a difference to price for American consumers. I'm a conservative Republican from the Deep South, Mr. Speaker. I have a vision of what this country ought to look like, and it's a, it's a vision of a country where every man or woman can follow his or her own hopes and dreams, wherever those hopes and dreams may take them. And it's a, it's a vision where the government doesn't put its foot on the throat of those uh, young Americans who want to pursue those dreams. But it doesn't mean that there's no role for government at all. When it comes to big infrastructure projects, the interstate highway system, for example, that transportation bill that just passed uh, this House uh, two short weeks ago. When it comes to our ports, when it comes to those big issues of infrastructure that matter to us all, that aren't just about jobs in our local area, but about jobs across this country, we have to come together to make a difference uh, in, those, in those ways. For those of us in Georgia, for those of us in the Southeast, uh, this brought Democrats and Republicans together, Mr. Speaker. This brought state legislators together with the executive branch. This brought uh, uh, folks together from Alabama and, and South Carolina and, and Florida and more. Uh, we can do those big things that matter. They're not easy. Sometimes they take a year or two or three. But in my three years of service in this institution, Mr. Speaker, I've never seen anything get done that was worth doing that didn't involve someone working awfully hard to make it happen. And more times than not, it wasn't one person working awfully hard. It was two of us, or three of us, or ten of us, or a hundred of us who got together to make these things happen. I am grateful to my colleagues for working with me to make sure that, again, not just a success for the city of Savannah, not just a success for the state of Georgia, uh, but a success for the United States of America. It is an example of the kinds of partnerships that we can create and the kinds of differences we can make in the pocketbooks of families back home. There are going to be families who receive paychecks who would not have received those paychecks otherwise because of our cooperation and success. There are going to be consumers who are saving money at the cash register each and every day because we were able to come together and build this much-needed infrastructure project. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield back to balance my time.